Welcome today to a new video talking about something that's not too new, terminals, terminal diagrams. I even have an interesting terminal lineup diagram that is very graphical here from uh, one of our friends, Johnny Wilson, on the ePlan engineering at the ePlan Software and Service. So technically, what I want to do is really show you a little bit more about uh, basically how this uh, can work. Um, Coming back to always the same thing, be efficient when the plan becomes e-plan. Technically, a terminal is connected through the schematics and is usually connected somewhere. So here you can see we have a few wires on that side, on that side. And if we get in here a terminal diagram, what is a terminal diagram? Well, a terminal diagram, coming back to this tutorial you probably all have watched by now, this is the basic tutorial from e-plan. And inside the basic tutorial, we have the generate report section. In this here, we explain all types of reports we can generate. And one of the reports, in particular, the one I'm interested in right now, is the so-called terminal diagram. So, of course, you can see we have tons of um, different reports we can generate. The one I'm looking at right now is a terminal diagram. More specifically, F13, it's one that uses conditional forms. So conditional forms enable me to actually put these graphics in there. Not only this, a terminal diagram will also show me what's connected. So you can see your two wires that are red wires. If you double click on that wire, you will actually see that red wire is 0.00 slash 0 one. This is exactly what is indicated here, and it tells me where it goes. Of course, this one here physically will go in and calculate the length of it. So my, my intention today is to show you a little bit more about how I get the graphics going uh, for this one, let's say this terminal here. So to start with, in this terminal diagram, I also indicate down here what the part number is. So I could actually go and get it down there. I could go and get it from the 3D. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm interested in is to pick up the graphics of this part number. So I'm going to copy, Control C, this portion here. And I'm going to show you a little bit how this works. So technically, put this aside and we focus, we look at this. This is actually generated with a report, which uses a form. The form is an F13 form. I'm going to copy this F13 form in a new form, and I will basically um, call it exactly the same name as my part number itself, so I don't have any surprises. I know exactly what it is. It's an F13. So that particular form looks like this at the moment. It's a form that most likely will have the wrong Let's just move that over here. So we keep down the form on that side. This is here. This graphic is to be replaced. It's going to be replaced by this graphic here, exactly the graphic as I get it from Phoenix Contact. This is the graphic. Now, what we do in this form here, the form is and has to fit on A3 size. So this pay, this, this graphic here, is in my case scaled down to half or 50%. So 0 0.5 is my scale factor just to have the right size. Then what I do is I take this one here using the design mode. I move it. So right mouse click move. Make sure that I hit the center point here and move it right on the center point of this guy here. Now the guy that was there or the graphic that was there, I just remove it. Okay, so this way, I don't have the original, I'm not sure what that is, so let's see if there's anything there. Yeah, this is some text. Now I have to figure out, okay, maybe I should move these a little bit, because if I don't move them, it's not going to go very well. So I'm going to move them up a little bit like this. This is cool, so that makes sense, that makes sense. This all fits. I keep it like that. Well, maybe I should do the same thing down there. Uh, not too sure. Let's see if I move this. Uh, move it just slightly out of the way here like this. Might be nicer. Might be even nicer. Perfect. This is now my new form. And now comes in the trick about the conditional form. Because when you call up a form, you always have a master form. 
In my case, my master form is this one here, the F305, uh, which is basically just a copy of the 105. And I added this conditional form here. So how this works is basically for each of these subforms or conditional forms, which are a little bit different, as you can see here in the graphic preview, we have some conditions. When it's very specific to a part number like this here, I just add the part number. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to call up the mu uh, form here, and I'm going to change that part number to the part number that we had uh, defined, okay? So we have the first one, this is the second one, uh, whoops. There we go, tap it out, okay, save it. And now we have a distinguished part number for a distinguished form, which is that new form that we just created. And all you do now is you close this, so the master form gets uploaded into your project. The second one gets saved also with the new graphics. And if we just go back here, we maximize this side, we should have something interesting once we update the report because I now replaced these ones. And you can see these are the ones that are replaced. The ones that haven't been replaced yet are probably part numbers that are unknown yet to the conditional form, and I just have to add them. So this actually makes it a little bit more graphic. And of course, if we actually zoom in and we check out uh, even the wiring, you will see if I take those and I have, and I run the routing, you will see these wires uh, are exactly here, the way that they are identified here. Right? So 1T1, 1T2, 1T3, these are the ones, the terminals. So the intention behind the terminal diagrams, for those of you who do not know, is to not only put together the terminal, but also to connect the terminal strips uh, very efficiently and even to cross-check them. Because very often, what is on the bottom side here is actually what is out in the field, most likely motors, sensors, solenoids, and something like that. This technique, very graphical technique, in Europe is very old. It's called a terminal diagram, terminal connection diagram. So I just showed you how to use a conditional form, how to create a conditional form, how to assign it to a master form. This was, again, part of my videos on how we can become efficient when we start using ePlan. Thank you. This was Roland Jung from ePlan.